So you might be walking down the hallway and you hear something that perks your ears, or you might be in the same space and you hear discussions. Um, those background conversations are critical. The coronavirus pandemic has dramatically accelerated an already dominant trend, working remotely. But this mass adoption of this new way of working has only further revealed the downsides. It's lonely. It's difficult to spontaneously interact with your team. Staying up to date and feeling connected is a challenge. Our guest on this week's Uptech Report may have a timely solution. Raj Singh is the co-founder and CEO of Loop Team, a virtual office for distributed teams. He hopes it might make this new world we live in feel more productive and liberating. Raj, I'm excited to be with you and learn more about Loop Team. To begin, I want to ask you, describe your company. Why does it exist in five seconds? Very brief. What is the, the existence of the purpose? Remote work is hard. Uh, people feel disconnected. We help with that. So people feel less lonely and feel more connected to their teams. I love it. And talk about more relevant than ever in today's pandemic world. People do want to stay connected. Now, this is about three years that you've been running it. What was the three years ago, we didn't have the pandemic. So what was the, the problem, the root problem you saw that wasn't really being met? You know, uh, my last company uh, uh, was a, a partially distributed team. I would, you know, we were acquired by Salesforce. I would check in with them on a periodic basis after I had left to see how they were doing. And they felt uh, one thing that you know, st kind of struck out uh, in, in my ear was they'd say they felt disconnected. They'd have to fly back to the sort of Salesforce mothership on a regular basis. And so I really started thinking about that. Like how can we make remote team members, especially in these partially distributed teams, feel more connected? Uh, and so that's where we kind of started. Um, and what we realized after interviewing 100 plus uh, individuals who work fully remote for both partially distributed teams and fully distributed teams there were some common themes, uh, a sense of loneliness, a sense of accountability, uh, getting a sense of who's actually around, a sense of being left out or disconnected. Uh, and so what we've done with Loop Team is we've tried to address a lot of those things through uh, what we're calling a virtual office, which provides a form of real presence, uh, a quick way to shoulder tap, so it's a little bit more seamless and a little bit more less friction to just sort of jump into a conversation, um, while also providing a way for you to see what's going on and what you've missed so you don't feel as disconnected. Can we dive into a bit more? How does that practically work? Can you give me an analogy of an everyday work, uh, work yeah. flow that that would come into existence? Yeah, yeah. So we, we a lot of times describe it as bringing the best parts of IRL in real life into a virtual setting. So think about your real world office, um, at least within an increasing segment, although it may change post COVID, uh, open office environments were very popular. And so you would see your team. Uh, you could be at your desk and you could see who's actually around. Um, as you look at your different team members, you can actually in sort of deduce or induce or however you want to describe it, whether they're kind of busy or not busy. Like, do they look like they're in flow? Uh, does she look like she's not in flow or currently like in deep work or whatever it is? Um, you can sort of see who's having a discussion. Uh, you see two people chatting in that corner. You can overhear some of the discussions. Uh, as you walk through your hallway, you can look through the glass and you can see who's in a formal meeting. Uh, so all of those sorts of things are completely lost when you're fully distributed. You can't, uh, you, you don't get that form of presence. You don't get that sense of like what's going on, what people are doing, who are communicating. And so the sort of core tenant of virtual office is to start bringing some of those things into life. And so our user experience you kind of see your team, but you can kind of see who's in flow. Uh, and we use some AI to try to figure that out uh, to give you a sense of who you can maybe interrupt or shoulder tap if you want to have a quick conversation, just like in the office. Uh, you can see who's meeting with who. Uh, so if somebody's having a discussion like, oh, those two are talking right now and so-and-so is in this room. Uh, so maybe not a good time to interrupt or maybe a good time to jump in. Uh, you can actually see in real time, uh, depending on how you've configured it, uh, summaries of discussions that are happening, like topics. Uh, so, hey, they're talking about baseball. You know, I really like the Giants. I want to jump into that water, water cooler chat, just like we would at the office in the coffee room or the snack room or whatever it might be. Um, and so uh, a lot of these things that I'm talking about are really things that already happen in a physical office, 
but you lose in a virtual setting where a lot of your interactions online just become formalized meetings. Um, and so uh, many of the teams that we see using Loop Team are using it in that way. Uh, 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 using it as a way to sort of recreate some of that office vibe. What it's done, it's actually sort of just generally improved some of the social dynamics and behaviors across the team that they're less likely to be sort of interruptive uh, uh, because they have a better sense of who's actually around. So let's dig into a little bit more. You talked about you have a, a little bit of AI that's running to help figure out what people are doing or not doing or inactive. How does that work? What, what can you share about that? Yeah, so uh, there, there's ranges of places within the experience that we bring in AI. Um, first and foremost is presence. Uh, and so a lot of times knowing when, when you're in an office and you're working and let's say it's like 1130 and you see your colleague get up, you just implicitly assume, oh, they must be going to get lunch uh, because it's just around the time or whatever. But when you're distributed, you actually have no idea. Uh, you think it's lunch, but you're not sure because your team's across a lot of time zones, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, and so one of the things we do is predictive status. We look at the historical sort of pattern and we can try to guesstimate like, oh, so-and-so may return in about a, in, in 30 minutes or, or, or in an hour. And, and these are actually very helpful because they sort of give you a sense. Uh, uh, this is not big brotherish at all. This is just to sort of get a sense like, hey, I'm actively working in this design file right now and I need to collaborate with so-and-so this afternoon, but I know their end of day is in two hours because they're in the East Coast. Uh, and I can see that through Loop Team because it's organized by time zone. And I also see they just stepped out and they're not likely to be back in an hour. I need to create a mental reminder. I should ping them when they get back, right? You know, and these are things that normally, like if you, uh, in a virtual sort of setting, what would ultimately happen is it would get sort of lost or delayed. And next thing you know, now you're in the next day, right? So it's affecting core productivity workflow. Another example uh, where we bring in some AI is when you're physically in an office and a lot of, a lot of teams talk about this as they go fully distributed, they lose some of the creativity uh, that comes from the serendipitous interactions that occur at the office. When you're at the office, you see people, uh, you just start talking about something. Maybe it's a feature, maybe it's a sport or whatever, but it leads into other sorts of ideas. But the other part of it is there's a lot of background conversations. Uh, so you might be walking on the hallway and you hear something that perks your ears, or you might be in the same space and you hear discussions. Um, those background conversations are critical uh, for driving sort of creativity because they open up people's minds, but they also allow for a lot more cross team information sharing and knowledge transfer. And so what we have done is we allow team members uh, or sort of within loop team to basically share their conversation, uh, not share in the sort of traditional sense, although you can do that as well. What I mean by traditional sense, just sort of simply record and share, but to sort of say, hey, uh, you know, I'm having an open conversation uh, as if I was having it in an open room. So if you want to jump in, you can. Um, and so what we do in that case is we actually identify topics um, that those folks are discussing in real time. And you can actually see these topics kind of float up in the experience. And you can say, oh, they're now talking about onboarding. You know, I don't need to necessarily jump into this conversation right now but maybe I have this additional piece of context now to now know to ask the next day or maybe a couple of days later, hey, you guys were talking about onboarding the other day, uh, you know, and, and it, gives me this, it gives me this little layer of insight that I didn't previously have and it really does sort of improve overall workflow. Um, I think the next step for us is right now where we see a lot of engagement and use is small, small groups within larger companies or just small companies uh, workspaces that are five to 15 sort of people, primarily individual contributors doing hyper collaboration. You know, uh, they're designers that work together, accountants that work together, where they did do a lot of this sort of shoulder tap kind of discussions when they were physically in the office. What we're starting to see is larger organizations wanting to use Loop Team. Uh, and so in that case, you have orgs that maybe are 100 or 200 people, and it can get very noisy with all the sort of different interactions that are going on across the office. And so really some of the goals over the next year beyond sort of launch is uh, just improving the UX in such a way uh, that you can actually start creating different groups within your org. And so you can kind of see presence Department. across your entire team. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Um, and one of the things that's really nice about that is a lot of the um, knowledge transfer is in the discussions across teams. And that's completely lost in a virtual setting because the only interaction that people have across teams is either a forced interaction, like, hey, we should have a 
connection because uh, some Slack plugin says we should talk once a week or what, whatever it might be. Or, or it's like all hands, which is not really an interaction. It's sort of a broadcast of one person to all. And so those interactions, which are very frequent uh, within a physical office, are very much lost in a distributed setting. And so this is where the sort of providing real-time summaries and providing a sense of what you missed, like, oh, I can see what the iOS engineering team is up to because I can kind of see what they've been discussing over the last few weeks. Uh, and that gives me additional context that just sort of overall improves uh, uh, my, my knowledge and sort of sense of feeling connected. So where can uh, people go to learn more and what was that first step they can take? What's the web address? Uh, so yeah, you can, they can come to loopteam.co um, and then at the website, there's a sign up to join beta and they have to fill out a short survey. It's not too, too long. Uh, the survey is not meant to collect market data or anything like that. The survey is much more about what's the size of your team, what platforms do you need, are you mobile, things like that. And so uh, it just helps us sort of triangulate, like can we actually support this team? Uh, and, then, uh, and then we follow up pretty quickly and we onboard. And uh, uh, it's definitely worth, uh, give, um, uh, definitely worth trying, uh, especially a lot of people in sort of this uh, uh, new, pre post COVID, whatever situation we're in right now, uh, environment, uh, uh, are fully distributed for the first time. And so they're looking at tools that can help sort of recreate some of the benefits of IRL. Be sure to check out part two of my conversation with Raj in which he explains his belief that a startup should have a strong hypothesis. And he talks about some of the modern challenges of managing personal data.